by our panel, NBR senior journalist Dita De Boni, director at Frank's Ogilvy Law, Bridget Morton, and co-editor of Newsroom, uh, Mark Jennings. Welcome to you all. Um, I want to start with you, Mark. Do you understand now why? No. <clears throat> no, I do not understand why. I mean, I think Tracy talked up a big game, talked about children's programming, talked about investment and infrastructure, but she still hasn't answered the question why. Uh, she talked about that there was concern in the industry, the media industry, about a, a slump, um, and that's true. But if this is the answer to that, um, you know, she should have come to the meeting because this is not the answer. Well, this looks like a government intervention. It is a government intervention, isn't it, Bridget? Yeah, it absolutely is. And it's not actually for Tracy to tell us why. That is actually for the government who's decided this is government policy to tell us why. And we've seen from the Minister of Broadcasting, Willie Jackson, the only reason why he can give us is actually because he wants to have some, you know, interference, it seems, in particularly what TVNZ's doing. And that's highly concerning. Well, does it seem <laughs> ideological? to you, Dita? Um, I think what's happened behind the scenes perhaps is that TVNZ has signalled that it won't be able to give a dividend in the years to come. And the government has taken this this um, this path based on BBC, ABC and other um, comparative countries. <laughs> I think in theory it's a good idea, but as someone who's worked in both organisations, RNZ and TVNZ, I just... The DNA of those organisations are so disparate mm. um, that it's hard to understand how that is going to work. And if what they're saying that they want um, public service broadcasting to lead, I just don't know that th their DNA for that is just not existent in TVNZ, even though they do some public interest broadcasting, mm. but it's not quite the same thing. Well, it's a commercial beast over there, isn't it? And to <coughs> can you compete yes. and collaborate at the same time? Well, TVNZ is a very commercial beast. And in fact, if you look seven to eight years ago, Kevin Kenrick, who was CEO, actually started a very visionary track for mm -hmm. TVNZ. He invested heavily... Um, in the on-demand platform, he moved the organisation towards digital. He, he actually is way ahead of this government. He, he's already doing it. Mm. Um, if, if they're worried about RNZ, just give it a bit more money. You don't have to spend hundreds of millions on this. TVNZ is already going down this track. Mm. He, and so, sorry, he moved it far ahead, but he, I, I think he, he lost any kind of idea of public service Broadcasting, you know, which was contained within TVNZ under the charter, which was then yes. shut down. So you can bring back a charter, Dita, and but solve the charter didn't problem. work. The charter didn't work. The well, there, there's the nub of the problem, isn't it? Because that's. <laughs> Um, it, it does seem incredible, I'm um, moving to this sort of the impact on the industry, it does seem incredible that we are going down this path, three to four hundred million dollars, but there hasn't been a robust analysis of what the intended or unintended consequences may be on the market, Bridget. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that was probably one of the most stark things that came out of that interview, that there hadn't been that analysis of really what this was going to do to the rest of the market. And you saw, you know, the Stuff CEO has actually come out and said that those things that they say they're putting in there around collaboration and things, the legislation actually doesn't allow for that. It actually, you know, sets it up that actually that could possibly come as a breach of the Commerce Commission, um, or the Commerce Act I should say, and so that's actually going to cause them a whole lot of other problems. They haven't got the safety in there that I think Tracy Martin was saying that there is. They don't know what's going to happen, do they, no. when, they <clears throat> when this uh, new entity, not the merger, mm. the new entity enters the market. They don't know. No, and by the way, it is a merger. <laughs> um, so well, the, the same we people, can call it a merger. The yeah. same people are going to be put together. Yes. Um, there's, there's not going to be a lot of new people coming in unless they're getting rid of a whole lot of people. Um, so, you, you know, I think um, I, I think the, the other thing that came, uh, well, the thing that came out, um, you know, when you say there, there is no cost-benefit analysis, Tracy tried to say, oh, we didn't need to do that because that was in the business plan. Yes. Well, that's not true. <laughs> yeah. it's, not, it's not in the business plan. And if Treasury think that, then they need to point it out very clearly to the media where, where it points out that the cost. I mean, this, this could collapse some of the media industry. Um, we, we need a proper cost-benefit analysis. How hard is it to do? They've had Deloitte, they've had, I think, Pricewaterhouse, they've had every big firm in here. Why can't one of them do it? Well, they might not uh, like what they find in those numbers, the government. Do you think it's, it's made a decision on this and it is forging ahead regardless of the cost or the benefit um, or the impact? Well, data? Treasury looked over it, but, I mean, I disagree 
that other media need to be consulted too much in this. And sorry, perhaps I take a completely different view. I mean, that's okay, that's what we're here for. If you look in Britain, the, a very strong BBC has not stopped Rupert Murdoch becoming one, becoming one of the world's richest men. I mean, already in New Zealand, media is very well supported by the government through various means, um, through public money. Now, why can't the New Zealand taxpayer have its own entity that is, not, that is only concerned with public broadcasting? Um, I, I just don't see why the private sector are crying so much about it. They already get a lot of help well, in various ways. Uh, Mark? Well, you, but do you need this huge merger to create that? We've got RNZ. It's, a, it's an excellent uh, public service broadcaster. And if you want a few more programmes without adverts on TVNZ, you can achieve that. Why spend all this money when we need hospitals and all sorts of spending in other areas? Because you need to shore up such an entity. I mean, they have found, there's been studies that have shown in countries where, with, a, with a really strong public broadcasting arm, which covers digital broadcasting and radio, as they do in other countries, mm. disinformation and things like that don't gain such a foothold. Mm. I mean, that is very important. It is not just solely the preserve of um, public media companies, though, is it? We're doing some public interest <laughs> broadcasting right here, right now. Yes. But, but, for example, if you look at the Auckland mayoralty mm, coverage, yes. um, you know, what public service broadcasting would do is put a, a professor who's written three books about it with his pipe and his patched um, jacket <laughs> talking to you for an hour about what, um, you know, Eke Panuku actually does, what AT actually does. That's not what TV does at the moment. No. They do interesting is stories. Is that what it should do? Yes. That, well, that's public service broadcasting. But Richard, what, well, but I would, think so I would argue does, that actually, the it's, diversity yeah. of platforms yeah. actually means that because, you know, a lot of people are not going to listen to an hour of the patch professor. What they want is something that's delivered in different platforms. Having a diversity of media means that gets out to a wider range of people. And we've seen, you know, a huge number of people under 30 never turn on an actual TV program anymore or even have a TV. That's that right. doing Everything streaming. So yeah. I think you've got to be really careful that whilst public journalism may have looked like the patch professor being very academic. Actually, you need the diversity of platforms to get to a diversity of people. You do. You need the RNZ content going out on all sorts of different platforms. That is ex actually what they're trying to achieve, whether they will or not. Is. Well, um, I want to touch br um, briefly on one other point at the end, because we are running out of time. But this idea of editorial independence is crucial, isn't it? And um, distance from the minister. We've already seen the minister uh, sort of sparring publicly with TVNZ at that select committee saying it needs to change its culture. But that's really important for uh, Kiwis, isn't it, to be able to trust? Yes, <clears throat> absolutely. I think it's really interesting that Paul Thompson, who has been pretty supportive of, of this merger and has played it carefully and kept his head down, the big point he made at the select committee was we need safeguards around editorial independence. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's going to be his big push and I think he's dead right. Do you think that would, that's going to help? We need to rein, in some way, reining the minister in, I suppose. Yeah, and absolutely. And Tracy Martin made the point that the Crown Entities Act has limited power, but it still has that power. If it's got no power, why did they set it up in this way? They could easily get rid of it if it's not that important. One quick one, finally, at the very end. Dita, do you think it's going to be a success? What's in your um, crystal ball? Um, I just simply think that the DNA that's baked into this organisation is going to be so disparate. Um, unless RNZ's drivers are the main drivers, um, it won't achieve what they're the, the high-minded aspirations for it. Bridget, uh, any concerns over its future? If, you know, a change of government that could end up being starved in this new capacity? Well, I think you've got a massive issue that this is going to be established before we get to an election and quite bedded in. So for any future government to unwind some of this is going to be really expensive mm. and probably not worth the money to do it. Mark? Um, and if they get to that situation and they can starve it of funds as well. There's two ways to get rid of outfits and that's scrap them or starve them.